Carrera Cup, Utes, Formula 3, sundry historic cars and for the first time the Aussie race cars will support the main event at Albert Park. FAA GT3 was expected to join the ranks as a replacement for the V8 supercars, but now they won't appear. Grand Prix CEO Tim Bamford uneasy with the reasons why. Well, look, you know, we speak every year to a whole load of people about the possibility of, uh, of, of being part of the program at Albert Park. We'll continue to do that. And, you know, some of those things take a long time to come to fruition. Some of them, you know, it's a, there's, there's a matter of timing. So, um, look, what we have, we presented today, um, our major uh, support categories for the event and, 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 and the theme of the event this year, Don't Hold Back, and obviously an exciting season coming up of Formula One. Has there been any pressure from Bernie Eggleston in not running the FIA GTs? No, well, look, I mean, our, our support category and, and, and the putting together of our event obviously is a matter for the management and board of the Australian Grand Prix Corporation. So, yes. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. No, obviously. Obviously, we consult and we make our decisions. How far down the track did you get? I understand that you ha actually have loaned Rusty French's 430 GT to put on display here at this launch today. Obviously, it's not out there at the moment, so it obviously got very close. Well, as, it, as things happen, as I say, we, we, we spend a lot of time in the planning and preparation of the event. We get to the launch and we produce what we've got and uh, what you've seen is it. With Michael Schumacher gone and several drivers, including Mark Webber, switching teams, the focus will be well and truly back on Formula One for the opener of the World Championship season. Uh, Adrian Newey, who is one of the best, if not the best, designer in Formula One, he's designing the car for next year and he was very keen to get that engine. Uh, people think of horsepower, people think of uh, the engine being a huge uh, role in the car's performance, which it is, but uh, the Formula One cars are so technical that you need the engine to be very flexible in terms of how big the radiators are, how all the looming and the electronics that go with the engine and that's why Adrian was very keen to get that engine because uh, the package of that engine is very good so he's happy to get that one. Also back, albeit without manufacturer support, will be the Silly Celebrity Race. Two of the celebrities, Hamish and Andy, were silly enough to talk to us. As you can see, the scrum behind us, you're very lucky to get the interview. People are going crazy about us here. <laughs> um, but we've always got time for you guys. Look, no, it is an error and uh, one we'll exploit to the full, mm. uh, its fullest capacity. We'll be milking it for entry into every single marquee or nightclub that we can find. And, the, uh, and to make it entertaining, my car I don't really like at the moment. It's got its rear vision mirror sticky tape on so I'm looking to just drive the car off the track and uh, drive it home. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well it's, it's going to be a spectacular uh, Grand Prix celebrity race. Now the one thing that we do ask though is that if you do do anything incredibly stupid could you perhaps as you get out sort of jump out and say and remember you can see this on In Pit Lane on Channel 31. Absolutely we're officially endorsing In Pit Lane on Channel 31. It's a great show guys thanks for having us on. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. I think Weber wants a word. Can I go? Of course. The 2007 ING Australian Formula One Grand Prix will take place on March 15 to 18, 2007. Sight and sound of the Formula 5000s attracted a good-sized crowd to Sandown for the return of the Thunder, the 2006 historic Sandown. 17 of the classic stock block open wheelers made it onto the track, as well as several on display in the pits and in demonstration laps. Local driver Andrew Robson and his ex-Brian Redmond Lola T332 won Saturday's first race after a thrilling dice with Kiwi Ian Clements. But a spin and contact in race two put Australia's only real hope out of contention, leaving Clemens to take two comfortable wins to lead the Tasman Revival Series. The success of the meeting delighted Victorian Historic Racing Register President Ian Tate. It's fantastic to look around here today and see so many younger people and, and especially kids here enjoying their racing. It's, um, it's, been, it's becoming an increasingly packed program, historic racing, uh, not just here in Australia but also around the world. Where does this particular meeting fit in the whole of the Australian historic motorsport scene? I think really it's number two to Phillip Island now. I think Phillip Island has taken off and over the last four or five years, and it's the most premier event in the Southern Hemisphere in my opinion, but uh, this meeting now is, is on its own footing and uh, we, we spent a lot of money bringing the 5,000s in from New Zealand and I'm sure we're going to put races on that the spectators want to see and that, that racing uh, is the Group C, Group A cars and the Formula 5000s. 
The Formula 5000s will return in even greater numbers for the Phillip Island Classic in March 2007.